Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. What I'm going to be talking to you about today is the phenomena of gear backlash. Now this idea for this video came about from a project that I presented last week, my attempt at creating an omnidirectional vehicle. And the idea of this vehicle was that it could drive you know, forwards and backwards and then change the uh, mode and turn the wheels inwards like this and be able to kind of rotate on the spot in order to change directions. Now this project did have a number of issues and one of the issues I didn't talk about was the issue of gear backlash that it also suffered from. So I thought today I'll be uh, make that a topic and talk about that and explain what gear backlash is. Okay, so what is gear backlash anyway? Well gear backlash is the phenomena caused by a very small air gap between the teeth. Uh, so for example, um, between the teeth of this gear and the gear that's being driven, uh, because there's a very small gap between the teeth, that means there's a very small delay between the rotation of the top gear and the gear being driven, because by the time you bridge that air gap, there's a very small uh, angular and time delay, uh, and that will cause um, a delay between, for example, the top gear and the bottom gear. So you can see, for example, if I hold the bottom gear still, uh, I can still rotate that top gear very slightly. I hope you can see that on the video, but there's a very small air gap. Because of that gap, uh, you've got that very small amount of rotation. And what that means is, like I said, there's a, uh, a delay, an angle in time between the top gear and the bottom gear. And of course, the more gears you've got in series, the worse this particular phenomena gets. And what that causes is an angular difference between for example, the top axle and the bottom axle, even in theory they should both be the same. Uh, for example, if both at zero degrees, what happens if I rotate that top one, there'll be a slight amount of rotation that I can create at that top gear before that bottom gear rotates. And that means there's a, an angular difference between the top gear and the bottom gear. And you know, that can be uh, an issue, for example, if you've got an instrument and you're trying to set the output angle, and you've got the input angle that you're trying to reflect, and because of that gear backlash, there's a slight difference between the input angle and output angle, and that can be a real issue. Okay, so how does this phenomenon present itself in practice? Well, I had this very issue with the design of this particular omnidirectional vehicle. Um, I had a quite a big delay uh, for one of the wheels, and I've just got a small model here of the wheel rotation mechanism. So what I've got here is kind of a mock-up mock of um, how the wheel rotation mechanism works. Here I've got all the wheels pointing in the forward direction. Then when I rotate uh, the, one of the wheels like this, we can go into the rotation mode. You can now see that all the wheels are pointing kind of a rotational um, direction. But then when I rotate them back again, uh, you can see that they're now all pointing forwards except for the uh, last one there. And again, this is the gear backlash that's occurring because I'm driving this gear to drive that one, to drive that one to that one, and by the time it's got all the way around, there is that, uh, because of those air gaps between the teeth, there is the uh, phenomena showing up there where the, the, uh, the wheel doesn't end up aligning properly. So that can be a real issue in uh, a design if you don't take it into account. And in this case, I didn't take it into account properly. I was driving just one of the uh, wheels to, and then connecting through to all four of them. And the uh, gear backlash issue ended up creating the problem where the wheels don't end up aligning once you're trying to go back in the forward direction. So I kind of have to overcompensate to get that one to align, but then of course I've gone too far with that um, bottom right one. Okay, so you might be wondering what is the angle of the backlash between the gears, and what I mean by that is what is the angle of rotate the driving gear by in order to engage the second gear, and that of course is a function of the size of the air gap and the angle between the teeth, and the angle between the teeth is of course a function of the number of teeth that the gear has in the first place. Of course, one way of measuring it is just simply uh, to, I guess, try to work out the angle of, of rotation before the gears mesh. And of course, it's a very small angle, so it's very difficult to measure accurately. So one way of improving the accuracy of the measurement is to simply put a whole lot of gears in a long chain. And since the uh, backlash angles will add up uh, across all the gears, all you need to do is, is work out the, or measure the overall angle between the first gear and the last gear and divide by the number of gear meshing. So in this case, it'll be the number of gears take away one, that'll be the number of meshings, and that's how we'd calculate or measure the overall uh, backlash angle of any pair of gears. Okay, so in order to measure the backlash of any two 16 tooth gears, I've created this uh, measurement mechanism here. So what I've done here is created a whole series of 16 tooth gears, kind of going in a circular arrangement. Uh, at the bottom here, I've got my yellow input, I've got a red output, and what we're trying to measure is the backlash going around that whole mechanism, or in other words, measuring the angle, the cumulative angle between input and output, 
and then dividing by the number of gear meshings. So in this case I've got 31 gears and 30 gear meshings and what we're trying to do is measure the cumulative angle and then divide through by the number of meshings. In this case it's 30. But I'll first just demonstrate the backlash phenomena so uh, see how I can rotate that input and it doesn't rotate the output at all. It's actually very loose and that is the uh, kind of illustrates the backlash phenomena quite uh, quite well because of course I can have a huge movement between input without affecting the output and it's not until I rotate the input almost 90 degrees that the output will start moving as you can see there. I've got uh, the small lift arm indicators kind of interesting because you can kind of see the angle change as you move down the mechanism uh, from aligning with the input to eventually aligning with the output and you're kind of getting every angle in between. Now if we want to measure the actual uh, backlash angle of each uh, of a pair of gears, like I said, all we need to do is measure the overall angle and then divide through by 30, which is the number of meshings in this case. So if we do measure that, it, uh, I mean I've sort of measured it, it's about, uh, I don't know, about 85 degrees from my measurements, so 85 is the amount I need to rotate uh, the input before the output will start rotating. So. To work out um, that for any pair of gears, so when you take that 85, and then divide through by 30 meshings, and we get an angle of about 2.8 degrees uh, for any two gears. Now, of course, um, this is assuming that the gears are sort of in a neutral position, which is kind of like the starting position. But if you take them to the to one extreme like this and rotate like 90 degrees, or even when, say, for example, to the bottom there, because all the teeth are now touching, I have to actually rotate back double that backlash angle in order to, to get back and start rotating the output again. So it's almost a 180 degree shift between uh, you know going forward and reversing so that is quite a big angular delay as well as a time delay. So obviously if you're rotating relatively slowly it might uh, take you know even a second or several seconds between seeing an you know, input change or change in input affecting the output or change in the output. Okay, so that's one way of measuring the backlash angle for different gears. Now you might be wondering how the size of the gear affects the backlash angle. So in this case I'll use the 16 tooth gears for this experiment. If however we go to 8 tooth gears, then what generally happens is that the smaller the gear or the fewer the teeth, uh, generally speaking the backlash angle is a lot larger because generally speaking the ear gap between the teeth is pretty similar between different size gears and because of the uh, fewer teeth on the uh, on the gear itself you need a greater angle of rotation in order to engage one tooth and to push the next tooth. So in this uh, example here I've got uh, 15 8 tooth gears and in order to uh, you know go from one extreme to the other I need to rotate about double the uh, angle, it's about double the backlash angle and that's simply because it's 8 teeth versus 16 teeth so generally speaking it's directly proportional to the number of teeth on the on the gear. So in the case of the 16 tooth gear that will have half the backlash of an, an eight tooth gear assuming the same size uh, ear gap and conversely if we go to um, you know 40 uh, teeth gears like this one uh, the backlash is uh, relatively small because the angle of rotation that's needed to engage the gears is a lot less so in this case uh, because the 40 tooth gear is five times as large as, a, as an eight tooth gear you'll find that the backlash is five times less of an eight tooth gear Okay, so in conclusion what I've learned from this experiment is that my wheel design uh, wasn't as good as it could have been uh, by having the gears driving around the circle like that uh, that we're going to get this backlash difference between the first wheel and the last wheel which was not ideal so what I really should have done in the design is have more of a central design like this where I've got a centre gear driving each of the wheel directions uh, like this and that way that guarantees that the backlash between all these wheels is going to be identical because the distance between the centre gear and each of the wheels is the same and also by using larger gears I can reduce the backlash angle as well uh, therefore reducing the overall backlash in the system. Hope you enjoyed this video, got something out of it please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.